Hi, and welcome to On Console, the video blog about my journey to becoming a certified NASA flight controller. Hi again, Jenny here. Welcome back to On Console, now in HD. So before we go into the second and third week of flight controller training, Let's take a second to talk about some of the exciting things happening here at NASA. If you didn't catch it, last Friday, a year in space began. So what is a year in space exactly? Well, last Friday, astronaut Scott Kelly and cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko went up to the ISS to spend a full year in space. So why a year? Well, basically we're going to use this mission to kind of study the long-term effects of what spaceflight does on the human physiology some of those weird changes I told you about in the last video. And, in turn, this will help us plan for a mission to Mars. So if you want to find out more about the year in space, check out the links in the description below. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled on console. Though, I know, not nearly as exciting as an astronaut and cosmonaut going to space for a whole year. Anyway, so, the second and third week of flight controller training. This time we went into a lot more specifics when it comes to the systems on board, including some of mine. One of those things is communication and tracking. So one of the main things that CNT deals with is communication, just like it says. Now this is more than just communication like talking back and forth to each other. This is a communication of different types of data, and this data can include audio, video, commands, telemetry, file transfer, and payload data, or experiment data. Now, where the tracking comes into play is actually getting this data. So the ISS communicates with us and us to them via satellites. And depending on where it is around the Earth, it uses a different one. So it's up to us to track the satellites and which one it's on so that we can maintain this communication. So another part of my group that we learned about is the Command and Data Handling Group, or CDH. So CDH deals with the computers on board. Now, really quick, there are a bunch of laptops on board things for the robotics workstation, for different science experiments, or even for the astronauts to watch movies while they exercise and Skype with their families. But what I'm talking about are the big computers, the ones that control everything on the ISS. And we call these ones MDMs, or multiplexer demultiplexer. But don't worry about those big words. Instead, just remember that MDM means computer. So in this, our MDMs communicate with each other in a tiered architecture which means our computers have different levels. Now, with this, there's MDMs, there's bus controllers, there's remote terminals, there's IO, there's 1553, there's local buses, there's user buses, there's... Actually, let me explain this a little bit better. So, as a disclaimer, this was not my idea, this is actually how it was explained to us. So, imagine for a second. So here we have our mighty king. So then, the king has his own soldiers. So the king has his soldiers, and he talks to these soldiers, and they only respond when spoken to. Because you can't just randomly go up to a king and talk to him. You have to be spoken to first. So the king polls all his soldiers, and they give him a status on all the things that they're talking to, which are the little people. Now, like I said before, the soldiers act as sort of a messenger between the people and their king. So the peasants talk to the soldiers, and the soldiers talk to their king. And the king gets the status of everyone in his kingdom. Okay, that's great, Jenny. So what does your terrible drawing have to do with ISS computers? Well, if you can understand this kingdom system, you can understand how the MDMs communicate. The king of the ISS is the CNC MDM, or the Command and Control MDM, which does exactly what the name says. The MDMs directly one tier or level below the CNC are the soldiers, and the smaller MDMs below these on the third level are the people. The third level, the people, are the only ones who actually interact with sensors and effectors on board. In each level, an MDM only responds if spoken to, and anyone with a lot of MDMs under it can make a general announcement that all of them will hear. So it's not that complicated when you look at it that way, right? Right. Anyway. Along with communication practice and our own systems knowledge, we also had to learn about tools. And no, not just tools like hammers and nails. 
but applications that were developed to operate the ISS, basically. So this includes keeping track of where everything is and where it's stowed, what the astronauts are doing and how they're doing it and the procedures they need, how we display the data down here on Earth so that we can easily read it, how we put together our errors if we get any, or even communicating with our flight director and other people on console. All these tools help us to organize ourselves so that we can more efficiently operate the ISS. Well, that's all for this week. Be sure to check out my Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter for more updates, and be sure to check out the previous episode or the first episode if you're new. Well, thank you so much as always for watching, and I hope you'll join me next week and for many more as we get one step closer to being on console. Thanks, and have a great week!